going on, guys? Welcome back to The Forge. It's Vulcan, and today, my goodness, boys and girls, I am back. We are talking games. So, uh, been a interesting past few weeks for me. I've uh, been on vacation, um, going through some stuff at home, uh, stress, stressful things. So, uh, glad you guys bared with me, but I'm back in the saddle, and I'm going to be uh, making some videos for you guys. So... I also have another announcement that I'll talk to you guys about towards the end of the video, um, and hopefully you guys will stick around to make it through, or knowing you guys, you'll either just skip all the way through it and go to the end. I mean, that's what I would do. Either way, doesn't matter. Let's 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 jump into it. So today we're covering something a little bit different. We're covering a MMORPG. Now I covered World of Warcraft a little bit back in the day, but this isn't particularly like that. Um, this is an MMO that I really thought was going to kind of usurp or maybe give uh, World of Warcraft a run for its money. It was a MMO that came out 2011, 2012-ish, and it was very different for its time. And this game I'm talking about, if you haven't guessed it yet, is Rift, or originally known as Guardians of Talara. Rift's better. So let's jump right in, guys, because there was some big news. The big news was early March, earlier this month, Rift Prime launched. What is Rift Prime? Rift Prime is a throwback to the vanilla, the original launch days of Rift. So we're talking a WoW classic version of Rift. You're gonna be able to play the game in the same constraints, the same world, the same environment that Rift originally launched in with a few, um, let's say caveats. Now, Rift itself was different because it had a few different things. It had actual invasions. It was very different for its time. These tears, um, essentially these big, uh, look like look like a void, just like death coming out of the sky. Um, these tears would come out and all these interesting creatures from different planes of existence um, would come through this rift and they would cause invasions into Lara. So as you're going through your leveling, you're doing your regular stuff, you'll see these uh, kind of whirlpool-looking things on your map. Those are rifts. There's different elements. There's fire rifts. There's air rifts. There's void or death rifts. There's um, water rifts, life rifts. And they're all um, essentially themed. You go, there's certain stuff you need to do. For instance, there's one in a fire rift. You have to destroy these supply crates that have hidden like, goblins in them, kill the goblins. You do enough of these things. You work your way through the stages of the rift. Eventually, it gets to a point where a boss will come out. You kill the boss. If you kill the boss within a certain time limit, then you actually get bonus levels. You go through those bonus level stages and you get bonus loot. Um, it's a really interesting thing. Now, these rifts aren't static, though, right? It's not just, here's a whirlpool, stick to this rift, and that's it. They actually send out, um, like, parties, hunting parties, that will assault um, different outposts, they'll assault cities, they will attack anybody on the roads. And this is very real because they will kill NPCs that you have to turn quests into, they'll kill healers, they will kill merchants, things like that. And those merchants, those people won't respond until that rift is dealt with. So it has an actual effect on the world. This was very unique for the time when all we had was World of Warcraft and Guild Wars, and it was very, very static. So it's a really cool system. Unfortunately, the way the game went um, from 2011 to today was not that great. Um, Tryon, the company itself, uh, they opted for a free-to-play, which is perfectly fine. But they got very, very, very pay to win to the point where you could just buy bundles of gear. You could just go to the store with your credit card. You could buy raid gear. So just buy this raid gear. I'm done. Congrats. I beat the game. And it obviously left a very sour taste in people's mouths. But it also caused so many problems because people, you, you had no, you, there was no need to raid. There was no need to do any content because you could just buy the actual gear itself for I think it's like $12. So what's the point? And um, that really ruined the game for a lot of people. Then they also did something else where uh, a new X-Pack came out and you had to quote, buy pieces of the DLC. The DLC was free, but in order to use the gear for the DLC, you had to buy certain things. You had to buy this uh, attunement 
um, and then you could wear the gear. Then you had to buy a slot for an ear earrings, which made you competitive in raids, so you had to buy it. So they piecemealed everything out, and it was just very, very poor management. It was so sad to see a game so unique like this when it first came out. It really, it really pulled me away from WoW. It kept me interested. I raided all through vanilla. Storm Legion didn't really keep me uh, entertained as much, but it was a really, really cool game, and to see it go this way was very sad. So anyway, we're back. Let's get back onto Rift. This is happy, jubilance. So. How close is Rift Prime to the original taco, the real deal, the vanilla flavor? It's pretty dang close, guys. It's pretty close. So there are a few things that are probably going to break the immersion for those old school vets like myself. Um, there are mounts that were added at a later date. Um, I saw a emerald uh, Kai Loon or whatever it is. Um, essentially, it's like a Chinese dragon with legs. Um, I saw one of those that was added way down the road. Um, housing uh, is added, aka Dimensions. Its profession, known as dream weaving, is also there, as well as the souls, which are different specs um, for each class that came with X packs down the road as well. So, a good example is the Harbinger for the Mage, which is the tanking class for the Mage. Yes, classes in Rift can do everything tank, heal, support, da damage, whatever. Um, and that was added way down the road. You can buy that, and not with real money, but with in game currency known as Planarite. And you can use that uh, that soul, which is really cool. I think that's a that's a cool way to do it because it adds a little bit of extra flavor to the original uh, game without completely breaking everything. So if it's done right and if the raids are correctly adjusted to account for this, I think we'll be in a pretty good spot. So though those things are in there, right? The spirit of the game is still the same. Rift itself is still there. I can feel it from the high time to kill to the slow leveling grind. It's very much like a classic MMO. The grind, it makes you miss the old days. Um, so I probably put about 16 hours into the game so far and I'm level 17. So taking this in consideration though, I'm also not power leveling through dungeons or warfronts. I'm just trying to enjoy the game as it comes through leveling, through going through the story, things like that. When the game first came out, I really rushed to 50. Like I pounded leveling, dungeons, warfronts, I did whatever I possibly could, rift invasions, in order to get to level 50, level cap, because I wanted to raid. And as such, I needed to be there first. So that's always been kind of a downfall of mine is just running through stuff. So I'm taking my time on Rift. It's been a blast so far. And I'm able to really kind of enjoy the game, let it marinate a little bit, stew. And then, uh, you know, I'll be able to eat it at level 50, which is cap. So why is this game so great, right? I, I, I'm talking about it's really a neat game. And, you know, it pulled me away from WoW, but why? Right? Why is it so? What makes it unique? What makes it different? Okay, cool. Rifts, things open in the world. So who cares? So it's much more than that. So there are things called artifacts. Let's start with those. That was probably one of the biggest things I really enjoyed. Artifacts are little hidden, sparkly gems out in the world. And they're hidden. I mean, they're under fallen trees, they're in bushes, they're on top of things. You have to do jumping puzzles to get to them, things like that. But they, you collect them. Um, they're not phased, so it's not like oh, 18 people can click on this one and they all get it. No, no, no. They're shared. So, um, which helps with the economy. So you find an artifact and you add it to a collection. Artifacts come in collections. They range from collections of 1 to 30. And as you're going through, if you get all the artifacts in a collection, you get a reward. The bigger the collection, the bigger the reward. Sometimes it's a mount, sometimes it's a title, sometimes it's just regular old currency or a pet. But it's really cool because it forces you to explore the world, to look for things, to slow down, not just to blow through zones and run past fallen logs and go through abandoned houses. It forces you to look for that stuff if you're interested in it. And I think it's really it's a great system the way they added it. And that was one of the main things I was super excited for when Prime came out. So rolling off of that, there's also hidden puzzles, like I mentioned, and they're actual puzzles. So there's one, I can't remember what zone it's in, but it's a bunch of different telescopes. And you have to click on these telescopes in a particular order to unlock or make a chest appear. There's no um, right or wrong. There's no documentation on it. It's literally just a puzzle. Um, they will react in a certain way that you will uh, hopefully catch on to. And once you do that, you can understand 
why they would go in a certain order and what they do. So pretty slick, things like that. There's also things called cairns. Um, that's C-A-I-R-N-S, cairns. Those are basically just hidden mounds, almost like a, a grave site. Um, it's really cool. They're really hidden. I mean, one of them is up on top of a mountain ridge. You wouldn't go there unless you were just exploring. And that's really what this game is about, is exploring and getting out there and, you know, kind of taking away from the the World of Warcraft days, right? Where today you have to, you just blast to max level. You get to max level in like eight hours. Get there, done, start gearing up, start raiding, done. And it's just very, very accelerated. This kind of forces you to not go in such a linear path and look outside of things. So... What else? There's collections. You can collect different like books, things like that for lore. Speaking of the lore, the lore is very confusing. Um, I like it in a way, but it's very confusing between the two factions, Defiant, uh, Guardian. Um, they have a variety of classes, which is really cool. And the way the classes work is pretty slick. So they have Rogue, Mage, Warrior, Cleric. Now, like I said earlier, each class can do everything. So a Warrior can obviously melee, DPS, tank, it can also heal, it can also support, and it can also do ranged DPS using lightning, kind of like Thor. Um, clerics can tank, heal, support, damage, whatever. They can do everything, and that's the cool thing. And the way these talent systems work is it's like old school WoW. You have three talent trees. These talent trees are called souls. Each one is a specific theme. I run a cleric, that's my main, and a cleric healer. I run the Sentinel Healer, which a Sentinel Healer is a single target, it's, um, really kind of high high heals uh, per second, but low AOE. So I have that one. I have the Warden uh, Soul, which is water AOE, and then I have a let's see, let's say Justicar. Justicar is the tanking soul. So you have these three, and each one has its own theme. You get points, 51 points, whatever, and you're able to use those into whatever tree you want. As you unlock more skills and spend more points in a tree, the roots of the tree will grow. So if you spend 20 points in your skills and talents in a certain tree, then you're going to unlock, on the bottom of this image, you're going to unlock 20 points worth of skills whatever so it's pretty cool it's a dual progression system in a way um it's a little confusing to understand at first but once you get the hang of it it's really really interesting it's really neat the world itself big all the zones are cool they have their own soundtracks they have their own scores um they have their own themes it's really really unique uh one of my favorites is gloamwood uh going from silverwood to gloamwood it's very like kind of spooky uh, halloweeny which is really cool um so the raids themselves are very old school. Very old school raids. They're not anything out of the ordinary, um, but they're just those classic epic fights. You know, you have this big buildup, right? Oh man, you know, this this person, I've been seeing him my entire leveling experience. Now I finally get to go into the raid and take him out. So it's that type of stuff, which is really, really cool. Um, but that's about it, guys. I mean, from the game itself, on the surface, it looks like your standard run-of-the-mill MMO. But once you get you know, past the surface, stop scratching the surface and dive a little deeper, you're going to find a really, really cool game. Now, it is pay to pay to play. It's subscription based right now. However, I'm really hoping Tryon sees the this massive success that this game has and they change the future of the game. Don't do Nightmare Tide. Don't come out with expansions that are, you know, just lackluster. Don't do that type of stuff and make this game. We're we're honestly giving you guys a second chance to make it right, and we hope that you guys capitalize on it. So that's my uh, kind of overview of Rift Prime, and I'm really excited to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Have you played it? Have you not played it? Um, let me know. And generally, I'm 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 really curious to know what your guys' thoughts are. So also let me know if you guys want to hear more MMO news. Um, I love MMOs. They're one of my favorite uh, genres of games and probably where I spend a lot of my time. So let me know if you want to hear more about these. Anyway, on to the actual news that I have for you guys. So I'm actually going to be starting a stream. Um, 
I want to start streaming again. I used to do it uh, a few years ago. It was a blast, lots of fun, took a lot of time, but I think I'm at a place now where I can start streaming again um, reliably, which is going to be awesome. And I'm not going to do it on Twitch, though. I don't want to do it on Twitch um, because there's so much on Twitch. And I really like Mixer. So I've been following Mixer a lot, looking at their platform, looking at really everything um, they're offering. I really like the system they have, and I think it's going to be a great great platform so keep your eyes peeled for that i will have a video coming out kind of detailing that entire uh process and when i'm getting started things like that so i'm gonna be streaming soon guys and uh we're gonna we're gonna do it live hell yeah so um that's the news hope you guys enjoy and as always this has been vulcan i'm out With the